Thank you so much. Um, as you know, IMA LWR is operating in Haiti uh, in a fragile context, uh, mainly characterized by clinical political instability um, associated with a deteriorating of security situations where criminal armed groups and gang violence um, continue to paralyze major urban cities, uh, worsening the already precarious humanitarian situation. Um, this is a situation that um, was exacerbated um, following the assassination of President Jovenel Moïse on July 7, 2021, uh, where we actually been facing a wave of kidnapping um, that uh, deeply affected the daily lives of the Haitian populations. So despite of um, this challenging situation, um, IMA staff is committed to build healthier communities by collaborating with key partners uh, to serve um, the most vulnerable um, people. Um, IMA has been working in Haiti since 1998, um, implementing um, an area of health services, including the large scale nobility tropical disease project. Uh, it was a project that was funded by USAID. Uh, to a joint effort uh, between the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Education, where we provide treatment uh, of um, the DITL, carbamazine, and abendazole annually to around 3.5 million people against uh, lymphatic amphiliasis. So the Ministry of Health and Population uh, is striving to eliminate uh, malaria. So, in support to this goal, uh, in the past three years, I may work with support um, with the Malaya Zero Initiative, um, develop and implement strategies um, that accelerate the path to Malaya elimination uh, through a targeted mass drug administration um, for elimination of Malaya. Yes, uh, in the aftermath of the um, 7.2 um, magnitude earthquake that worked the southern um, region of the country, um, three or uh, three days after preliminary figures about the death tolls, the number of injuries started emerging. Has search and rescue teams and volunteers scrambled to robots to find survivors, um, but the Urgency um, need following the earthquake was um, the necessity the necessity for the humanitarian organization to reach the affected areas um, to address basic needs. Um, where two um, three days after the earthquake, um, there were already reports of lack of food, um, safe water, and medicine in some of the most affected areas. Um, it was also reported that several hospitals were damaged or destroyed, um, while those still operating were completely, completely overwhelmed, um, lacking um, sufficient personal and medical supplies uh, to respond to, to growing health needs. So the destruction of the health facilities um, left residents with long distances uh, to travel um, so that they can, can get access to care. So it is also important to mention that uh, Haiti healthcare system um, was already strained because of the COVID pandemic. By far the biggest response challenge I personally saw and faced on the ground, not only for IMA staff, but also for all uh, humanitarian partners was to navigating any complex security situations where gangs are um, actively operating um, blocking the certain part of the Port-au-Prince metropolitan area, uh, which creates serious um, logistical barriers that made it, made it very difficult uh, to reach um, the affected areas um, by land from Port-au-Prince. So we forced to find alternative uh, routes and modes of transportation um, to reach affected people as fast as possible um, including traveling via sea or air. This, is, this was a very, very, very challenging situation. Three days after the earthquake, um, I may have health deployed an emergency response team to the most affected areas um, to assess the most 
um, urgent needs, um, particularly focus on uh, healthcare facilities, where we assess um, 82 healthcare facilities and the three most affected departments, um, Grand Dance, NIP, and the South region, uh, as well as um, distributed uh, relief uh, supplies and non-food items, um, including water purification products, tops, and hygiene kits to displace people and cooperation with local officials. So following the assessment, uh, we are able to identify the following areas of critical needs, particularly um, um, to ensure that the basic primary healthcare services were provided to the most people in need, uh, which is estimated um, to over um, 200,000 affected people in those areas. Restore access to um, the essential health services and the four targeted health facilities, particularly in Grenada's department, uh, one of the most affected departments of the country, um, was one of the top priority for IME staff. Um, based on access needs, IME prioritize restoring the structural integrity of facilities, including uh, water supplies, um, providing supplies and medical equipment, uh, and other equipment necessary to return the facilities to fully functioning status uh, so that they, they can um, continue providing improved basic primary health care services to the affected population um, following the disruptions of the health care services in the aftermath of the earthquake. Uh, also to support the health facilities uh, and providing and pivoting quickly to address um, communicable diseases um, like um, COVID-19, um, cholera, and other waterborne diseases. So we train uh, and mobilize um, 20 community health workers, um, five per health facility, uh, to conduct awareness campaigns on communicable diseases, promoting healthy hygiene and sanitation, and also distributing buckets and water purification tablets. So I can say on behalf of the IAT team, I would like to thank all the donors um, for their um, generous gift, um, for their donations. Uh, we are particularly thrilled to have your support. Uh, through your donations, uh, we, are, we are able to restore the healthcare services to the most marginalized and vulnerable part of the Haitian population and we will continue working towards um, supporting the affected communities. So you truly make a difference for us and we are extremely grateful to you.